Noin, täällä ollaan Leppävirralla ja Tatuointimuseossa. Täällä on moneen moista, että täällä kannattaa käydä, jos on tuota kiinnostunut tatuoinneista. Täällä on jotain vanhoja tatuointivehkeitä ja Paljon on, on taidetta ja Sielläkin on vanhoja nakuttimia This is my wall of fame. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so as you can see, I've been to quite a few tattoo conventions all around Europe. And so I get the tattooists to actually sign all the posters. Oh, so okay. this is all autographs from tattoo artists. Okay. So obviously I can't remember who's who anymore. So yeah. <laughs> I've been getting them to do their cards so that I actually know who who's who. And so I always say, if you're famous, you're on the wall. If you're not famous, you're not on my wall, are you? And so, but it's it's pretty cool because it's also a timeline. Yeah. Because it shows you I've been to France, England, okay, Germany, Poland, Transylvania, Austria, Finland, America, Greece, Italy, and that's just the posters that are actually. On the wall. Yeah. So I've been around, as you can imagine. My little van outside, I've done over a million kilometers in it. Okay. All around <laughs> Europe. And people say, you know, what do you do? So I have a modern day Indiana Jones because <laughs> I've traveled and I've been to thousands of tattoo studios, thousands. Yeah. And I've collected. And you can imagine if you go into a tattoo studio, And they've got one old thing. What are they going to do with it? So they would either give it to me, donate it, they would sell it, or we would swap it. And I've put together, as you can see, quite an incredible collection. Yeah, lots of old stuff, old tattoo machines. And, and this is only half my collection. Oh, there, there is an other half. Yes. <laughs> So poor old Penner, if he had any hair, he'd be tearing it out because he's always saying, oh my God, what's he up to now? Because I have plans. What's uh, next? I said, well, I want to build up. He says, oh, I don't think, well, that's no problem. Let's build down like they do in London, like five stories, you know. Then we can have like in London, a swimming pool and, you know, all the things that you would do and garages and stuff like this. So, uh, but did you see, uh, did you see this wonderful picture? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. So, is it, this is something then I would guess that you actually would know about tattooing history. Because I've learned this week, it's not Otzi the Iceman, it's Utzi the Iceman. Utzi. So, Utzi the Iceman. Yeah. So, you've heard of it? Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. heard. You heard of him? Yeah. Have you ever met him? No. Well, <laughs> now's your chance. Follow me. <laughs> Okay. So, Utzi the Iceman is in fact the oldest evidence that mankind was tattooed over 5,350 years ago. Yeah. So he has 57 tattoos. Yes. Two lines going around his wrist, dots and lines and a cross behind his right knee. 57 tattoos. Then the academics all said, oh, well, this is all... Uh, Medical problems and acupuncture. Absolutely rubbish. 57 <laughs> tattoos and acupuncture and medical. No, come on. But anyway, they've done a huge amount of research about Otzi the Iceman. 
Well, you know, we know he's very important because obviously he's got the same blood group as me, O positive. Yeah. They know what his last meal was. They know he was smoking cannabis. And the latest research has actually shown that his tattoos are hand poked. They're not cut. And that charcoal is... Really yeah, yeah, I, I know. that. It's Chinese style. They're actually hand poked. And using infrared technology and photography, they found images that you can no longer see with the human eye. So they've discovered another four tattoos on his chest and on his rib cage. So Utsi now has officially 61 tattoos. So when they found him, they found him in the ice. Yeah. They didn't realize what a very, very important discovery he was. They took him down, then they realized this is something special. So they fought over him. And they realized they found him 85 meters on the Italian side of the border from Austria. Yeah. So he's officially Italian. And he's in a museum in Bolzano. As you can see, the poster on the wall, this is my poster on the wall from Bolzano here, where I went to visit Otzi and I got everybody to sign it. And I wanted Otzi to sign my poster, but for whatever reason, he didn't sign it. <laughs> he is so important that if the electricity goes off in the museum and the generators don't take over, ambulance and the fire service will be there within minutes to escort him to his very own room in the local hospital. Otzi was in a fight with his enemy. They know this because he had damage to his hand. So he left his enemy and his enemy shot him with a bow and arrow. And because they found him with his own bow and arrow, they could calculate that his enemy had shot him from a long distance. But they also discovered him with a copper axe, which then predates when mankind first had copper. This arrow is hitting him in the back of the shoulder. He's rolled down the mountain, dislocating his arm, and he's ended up in a small hollow which protected him from the wind, and he's bled to death and froze. Yeah. So they're actually learning about Utsi, the Iceman, here in Finland, in the fifth grade in your schools. So people do know a little bit of a history about Utsi, the Iceman. But my Utsi is creating his own history. <laughs> in fact, a friend of mine in the United Kingdom is actually a magician, mentalist, and he makes horror props. And so I came up with the idea and I contacted him and I said, I want you to make me something. He said, what do you want? He says, I want a copy of a tattooed hand from Egypt that's 4,000 years old. And he said, that's no problem. So he makes me this hand, it costs me 50 euros. God, dear. <laughs> 50 euros. Two weeks later, he rings me up, your hand's ready. I want to do a handover. Ha, ha, ha. Where do you want to meet? <laughs> Let's meet in McDonald's. So I'm sat at the table in McDonald's and he comes in and he slides this hand across the table and all hell breaks out. People screaming and shouting, oh my God, oh my God, is it real, is it real? He's going, of course it's real. Absolutely chaos. <laughs> so this hand I take with me take it on shows and I put it in the cabinet and something there worth a lot of money and now everybody, oh my god, this hand, is it real? Oh my god, oh my god. So I give him a ring and I said, look, I said, this hand is causing a real stir. I need something a little bit bigger. What do you need? Let's see, nice man. <laughs> 128 hours of hand work. Well, he had a job during this time, so obviously to find that amount of spare time took one and a half years. During this one and a half years, he was single. 
And he picked up two ladies, took them back to his flat, and there's Otzi in the front room. And they're like, oh my God, we found ourselves a mass murderer. And they've done a <laughs> runner straight for the door. So he always says to me, your Otzi cost me two girlfriends. <laughs> so eventually, one and a half years, he's finished. He's really happy about giving him back to me. So he contacts me, your Otzi's ready. It's time for the handover. I'm like, oh my God, not that darkness. No, 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 no. Let's do it in a really nice, fancy restaurant. It's on the table in this really nice, fancy restaurant, and he wheels Otzi in, and all hell breaks out. People screaming and shouting, thinking he's wheeling in the dead body. So Otzi's finally being presented to me, and I'm leaving the United Kingdom, and I got stopped by the customs coming out. And the customs guy says, what have you got in the back of your van? <laughs> Something you've never seen. I've seen everything. Well, you haven't seen this. I have seen everything. You haven't seen this. Well, you better let me have a look. We go round the back of the van, I open the doors, and there's Otzi lying there, and he goes, Frank, 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 come quick, come quick. We found somebody that's uglier than what you are. <laughs> so the next minute I had 15 customs people all around the back of the van. <laughs> well, I've been stopped by the police, customs in Holland, in England, in Germany, in France. So he's creating his own history. And in fact, only uh, on the last show in Germany, I didn't secure him properly and he fell over and his head fell off. <laughs> And so I have had him fixed. So he's now semi-retired here in his very own gallery. Yeah. But about two months ago, I decided to take him out for a little walk and a jolly down by the lake so I could take some photographs outside in the, in the snow and the ice. <laughs> so, but now he has his own gallery here in the world's biggest tattoo. Tuosta mä siirrän ton yhden kukan jonnekin tonne, mutta tää on aika hyvän kokoinen tossa. Tuossa ja sit siirretään tuo yksi vaikka tonne, niin että siinä on ympärillä. Mä teen siihen sitten vähän koristetta vielä. Niin... Joo. Niin, niin. Jatkakaa vaan, mä menen valmis. Joo, mä... kyllä. So if you see anything that you really like, if you point it out to me, then I might be able to tell you a little bit of history about that particular Well, there are so much cool stuff. Um, to do a tour takes about one and a half hours. And in fact, yesterday I had two doctors here. Okay. And so they came and their relatives, their mum and their dad, were cooking. And so we did half the tour. And they, they got a message, your dinner's ready. So they said, we really need to go. <laughs> but they were so impressed by everything. They come back after dinner and we finished the tour. So part two after the dinner. Give me a shout if you want any more stories. Yeah, okay. Because there's a lot of history. There's a machine here. See this machine? That's actually this machine here on the end. It's an Owen Jensen from America, 1940s. But you have entered the world of secrets. The world of tattooing. Everything was secret. But even the secrets were secret. And as you can see, the machine is this one. But the guy has actually put this coloured plate on the side so you cannot read the name. Because everything was secret. And inside there is the tower. 
in that gallery, the tower. That's the tower of secrets. It's full of secrets. Okay. <laughs> if I tell you the secrets in that tower, then I have to lock you up. I thought you'd say, I will have to kill you. No, we'll lock you up. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oikinlaista. Noin, semmonen pikainen pyrähdys.